Hello, um, I'm Lucy and I am a fibre artist from the UK. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope I hope you're all having a nice day. It's nice and raining here, which is uh, quite typical for us. Um, so I'm here today just to tell you a bit about myself, um, my weaving background and just kind of where I get all my ideas from, um, yeah, my inspiration and my love for colour and texture. Um, I'll also show you some examples of my work and then I will also show you some techniques that is also covered in my domestica course, which is also why I'm here because I've I've done a domestica course. Um, so yeah, so I started weaving in about 2013. Um, I've always been heavily into craft uh, and making as I've been growing up. And um, I come from a very creative background. Uh, like my, all of my family are in the creative world, I guess. Um, and I also married into a creative family, so it's very much uh, an everyday thing for me. Um, so yeah, so in about 2013, I I was really into sewing, um, and I really love uh, creating, you know, with stuff with wool. And I tried my hand at knitting and crochet and stuff, and um, I was just not uh, very good at it. So. I found an old loom off eBay um, and I just thought it looked really interesting. So I bought it, uh, not having a clue how to use it or anything like that. And just kind of uh, taught myself over about, I, I say it was about a year because then in 2014, I was asked to teach um, weaving, which was a real it was a quite a, a learning experience considering I'd only really taught myself um but it kind of stuck because I loved it uh, everything I loved about making um was incorporated into my weave so um and, and I didn't give it up which is kind of a big a big thing for me when I'm making stuff um so yeah, so I began, yeah, I began weaving properly 2013-14. Um, and then since then, I've been kind of, uh, I was also a graphic designer on the side. So my main job was a graphic designer, and then I would weave and teach at the weekends. Um, but since having a little girl a couple of years ago, um, I've decided that weaving and making and writing books is the kind of path that I'm now going down so yeah so I just wanted to show you a couple of weaves that I have made um I can hang them up here so these are just a couple of um wall hangings that I've created myself um kind of winging it as I go making lots of texture I'm a big fan of uh creating texture in my work um I don't know if you've taken my course in Domestica that uh, I realised I'd said texture, the word texture, just, just, I don't know how many times I say it. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm a big fan of creating texture. Uh, so, yeah, so I always look out for materials that are, you know, they've got some kind of squidginess to them, I guess. Um, a lot of, like, volume, uh and a little bit different than just the standard weave, which is this bit here. Um, and here is another one. I'm just making a big pile of weaves. So I make all different sizes. Um, my largest loom is about one and a half meters tall by about two meters wide. Um, so I, I can create really large weaves, but I also just like to make, you know, nice wall hangings um one of the largest weaves that I've ever made was a weave for my wedding um I really liked the idea of us getting married in front of this woven piece of work that I'd made and actually it was a really great thing to make because it was really calming around a really stressful time so that's one of the things I really love about uh sitting down to create a tapestry weave is that you know you can get really engrossed in it and uh hours and hours can pass without really uh 
realizing which is a good thing and a bad thing like you know if you've got stuff to do then maybe you don't sit down to weave but um I love it and then when I get the chance to really indulge in those materials and sit down like that's kind of a, yeah I get into a bit of a meditative state and just kind of create um and so a lot of my weaves are quite abstract like this and um so you'll see that you know there aren't many many geometric shapes it's all kind of like looks a little bit like landscapes but um but they're never really based on a landscape they're just more kind of free forming and um it's really about the materials that i pick and the way that i do that is by um i've got cupboards and cupboards of wool um you can kind of only see bits of it planted around but um i do have a lot of wool and i like to sit down and a part of yeah the part of experience for me is kind of uh getting all my wool out and then choosing various textures and colors and um different materials you know like you don't have to just weave with uh wool you can weave with various things like i've got a cotton here this is like a cotton rope um i love weaving with that um and yeah i weave with a lot of kind of this is another rope which is like a i dyed this using some avocados so you can get like a really lovely peachy color and another one I have here, which is another favorite of mine, is um, some yellow kind of rope that is dyed with some onion skins. So you kind of probably will notice in my work that I, I stick to quite a, uh, a similar color palette. Well, at the moment, my color palettes are often pinks and yellows and creams and a little bit of brown. Um, and that for me, when I sit down and pick out a few balls of wool is part of the enjoyment of making my weave. Um, and in my course, there's a lot of like uh, background stuff on making mood boards um, and just trying to create a really nice story behind your chosen piece, which is uh, really lovely. It's a really lovely thing to do. Um, and I live, uh, I live by the sea, so a lot of my work uh is inspired by that even though i don't use those particular colors like the blues and things um i'm very inspired by the ocean and the way the the way my work flows and the way weaving flows as well is very similar i feel um so yeah so there's just a few of the smaller pieces that i've done another large piece that i've done is a um i did a really large commission for british airways um they saw my wedding weave uh, that I'd created and then on Instagram and then they got in touch and they wanted me to create something very similar and funnily enough uh, with the subject of waves. Um, so I created a huge blue woven piece. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it anymore. They have it. Um, but it was featured on their front cover of their first class magazine. Um, so if you were lucky enough to fly first class, then uh, my work was quite, quite heavily featured. And then there was a, a lovely little film made about it as well. Um, but yeah, so they're just a couple of pieces that I've created. Um, and this is the piece that I created for my domestic course. So I'm going to show you a couple of the techniques today, which is um, creating lovely tassels. They are my favorite thing to make um i really love making tassels and um, we'll create some loops um and we'll do some sumac which is this plait here using some roving so i'll show you a couple of the basic techniques that we cover in the course um but i just want to run through a couple of the materials that i really like to use which i've got in front of me um so yeah so Got, as I mentioned before, I really like to uh, create my work with some rope. Um, another good tip is to buy uh, braided rope, not braided rope, sorry, twisted rope, already twisted. And then what you can do is you can just unravel the twist and um, you can get some really nice texture there. And there I am again, just saying, constantly saying texture. Um, and you'll notice here, this is done with like a, a rope that was twisted and you get like a little curl in it. 
Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so rope is a good good piece. Um, I also use lots of 100% wool. This is wool that I got from Iceland, which uh, and that's another really lovely thing. Is like when you're on your travels or going various places, I really like to pick up wool that I find locally. And then so when I weave, it might not even be local. It might just be from a charity shop. Um, I weave with that stuff. And like when I come home, it's really nice to be reminded of that time when I bought it and funnily enough it takes me a really long time to take to use those balls of wool I think because um I just have quite a sentiment like an attachment to it so I just don't want to uh I don't want to like um sorry my phone has just turned off so I need to connect back on um so I'll carry on talking if I can whilst I'm doing this uh but yes yeah, so I just, oh no, hang on, sorry. Just because for in a sec, like in a minute, we're gonna be doing some overhead, which I'm doing on my phone. And obviously um, we've got a technical issue. So obviously that was gonna happen. Hopefully, can you just bear with me one second? So sorry. Sorry about this. <laughs> it is alive. So these things are going to happen. Oh, hopefully we'll be okay. Um, hopefully that's worked. Sorry, one second, I'll get back. Okay, cool. I think we're okay. Oh, slight panic. Um, uh, so yeah, so where was I? Uh, picking up wool from various places. Um, yes, actually one really good example. I will crack on with some, show you some techniques in a minute. It's just, uh, I, I really love wool. Um, and uh, that whole thing has thrown me a little bit. So yeah, when I, for example, I, I bought some wool. I went to New York many years ago when I was 21 and I bought two balls of wool uh, and I kept them for over 10 years and didn't use them uh, because I just felt like the, the never the right project came to, the project wasn't special enough for, for me to let go of this wool. And anyway, <clears throat> it got ridiculous and I just took the ball of wool to a workshop I was running, a weaving workshop, and I let a lady use it and it was, uh, was a real experience to, to let go of this ball of wool. So you can kind of see how um, I'm quite passionate about my materials. Um, so if you do have any questions, I can kind of answer as I go along, just pop them in the comments chat. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna show you, oh no, it's happened again. Oh, this is awful, isn't it? Hang on. Well, just, just give me some questions whilst I'm sorting out my technical issues. Hang on one second. Hmm. Don't really know what we do if this carries on. Right. I don't know. Might just have to get cracking on the techniques and hope this works. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna show you some basic weave before my uh camera oh now you can hear my voice can you hear my voice yes Ooh. hang on a second okay right let's get cracking and then worst case scenario we'll just bend my laptop down and we'll do it that way and I'll do it upside down. We'll see how we get on. So um, I've created, uh, I've got a woven uh, tapestry weaving loom here, um, which I have already warped up just to show you because um, hopefully everyone, if you're gonna weave along, you have a warped up loom. Um, this is just a tapestry loom, which is about, I'd say about 30 centimeters by about 40. 
Um, and I've just warped it up with a medium thickness of warp. You can use anything for warp as long as the it, as long as it's strong. Um, I wouldn't recommend anything like this because the you know your warp is going to get a lot of hard wearing, um, and you don't want it to start fraying and to start snapping. So <clears throat> just bear that in mind. I recommend. This is like a thin, no, this is a medium weight warp. Um, it's roughly just under two millimeters thick. Um, and so, yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put my stick through my shuttle. This isn't a shuttle, sorry, my weaving stick. Um, and this is just separating out my warp threads. So here we go. And what you're going to do, <clears throat> see, weaving is a series of going up and over, up and over, up and over your warps. And then what we've got here is I've just done it. So I'm going under one, over one, under one, over one, so like that. So what happens is, is it actually makes it easier and quicker to weave um, by opening up the warp threads. It's called opening up your shed. Um, and what that in happens, what makes that happen is that then you can really quickly just pass your your shuttle through. So this is a shuttle, a weaving shuttle here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some, um, I'm just going to load it up with some wool. So what we do <clears throat> is taking your shuttle in one hand and your wool in one hand, I'm going to do a figure of eight. So you're creating a figure of eight. You can and you can load this up with a few uh, strands of wool at a time. That will then create your weave like a chunkier weave, like this. Here we go. <clears throat> Don't worry if you haven't got a shuttle. Absolutely fine. Just roll up a little bundle of wool and use that to um, to weave with. So. We're going to start weaving and this is just some basic weave and I have a rule when I'm weaving is that you whenever you do anything fancy like a row of tassels which is what this is I've already created a row of tassels you always follow it up with a row of a few rows of basic weave that's kind of just my uh, tip because you want to keep these warp threads nice and consistently spaced because if you start doing all this fancy stuff and your warp threads start doing things like this, then you're gonna come into problems later on. Um, nothing too major, just that uh, you'll find it quite difficult when you take it off the loom. Um, so we are just going to start weaving. So with my shuttle and my stick, I'm just gonna open it up. And because I'm weaving for the first row, I'm just gonna weave from the middle. <clears throat> and pull through, bring my shuttle down, stick down, sorry. And then to back down your weave, you can either use like an old fork or your fingers, or you can use a comb like this. You don't need one of those really. It's just something fancy that comes with your loom. And you just poke your end out the back. And now this time when you go back over your warp threads, you'll notice that you want to do the opposite of the row below so you always check the last warp so here i've gone underneath the weave and underneath the warp so this time i want to go over the top but your stick doesn't open your shed that way so you're just going to push that to the top and this time use your fingers so just pull out the warp threads that you want your warp to go under <clears throat> You don't have to, or you can just use your warp, um, your shuttle, like that's a really good way of doing it as well. But I like to, I like to use my fingers with this. And then pulling my wool through. Don't pull all the way through yet. I'll show you a tip that I use at the end um, to get a good tension. There's another thing I find that is a bit of a problem is when you're weaving and your tension is really tight. So that means that the warp threads start to come in like this. 
Uh, and unfortunately, once you once that kind of starts happening, uh, there's not really a huge amount you can do. Um, so a tip that I often teach is by making sure that this water wool on this side here is just touching and you want to bring this in at a 45 degree angle or thereabouts and you just pull down to create a loop like this little bump uh, use your finger to push down the middle and then with your fork or your comb or whatever it is just use that to back down and that will give you the correct tension going across and you'll notice that on this end it's not really it's not really uh it's not really touching so much it's kind of just loosely wrapping its way around now going back we can pull our shed back down open it up and this time we can just pass our shuttle through making sure you've got a nice bump back down so because I've done a row of tassels, I'm following it up with a couple of rows of uh, basic weave just to make sure that those warp threads are all um, keeping it together. I created a weave when I first started couple, couple, quite a few years ago, and I basically just created the whole thing in uh, tassels. And what you'll see in a minute when, we, when I show you how to make a tassel, each one uses two warp threads. So when I took the weave off the loom, the whole thing kind of just whoops, like just went massive because there was nothing keeping these warp threads together. They were all loose. Um, and that's what's happening here. That's what's, what I'm doing is keeping them all together, keeping that tension, creating that fabric, really. Um, so I'll just do a couple more rows, but this is basic weave or tabby weave as it's called in other places. I don't know, um, I've noticed we've got a few people from quite a few different countries and maybe you call it different, something different elsewhere. Um, let me know if you do, that would be really interesting. Um, so yeah, so this is just some basic weave, tabby weave, basic weave, whichever you prefer. I'm using a, a, a loom from a company called Lost Pond Looms. They are US based um, and they sell on Etsy and eBay. So if you're looking for a good loom and also my really large loom is also uh, from there. So just gonna finish this row off. And you'll notice that when I started, I started from the middle. I don't start from the edge um, and I'll also finish in the middle. And that's just because um, I, I, I guess I'm a lazy crafter or a maker, weaver, whichever. Uh, and it's because at the end, I don't want to sit and um, weave and sew all my ends in. So what I do is I make sure I do it as I'm going along uh, just because, yeah. I know that I would not finish it off. So, so I just bring that through, finishing off my last, um, use my fingers this time. Just trim off that last bit, just being extra careful when you use your scissors around your warp threads because you don't want to snip your warp threads. Um, there's not really a lot you can do once that happens. Right. <clears throat> Is someone from Slovakia. What is the name of the loom company? Sorry, yes, it's called Lost Pond Looms. That's it there, actually. Um, they're, they're just a really lovely, sturdy com uh, loom. It's my favourite. Um, not sure I should be advertising <laughs> businesses on here. But, uh, yeah, anyway. So, uh, that's my basic weave. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another row of tassels over the top. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it in various different materials so you can see how uh, a, loo a, a tassel comes together. So, here we go. So, I'm just going to use the same wool that I was using on my basic weave. Uh, and this time I'm just going to use a little, I've got one, two, three, four, eight strands of wool here and they're roughly about 30 centimeters long um so when you 
create a tassel, you can either do it over the two warp threads or you can do it over four th warp threads. I'll show you both ways. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from one side to the other just so that my weave is symmetrical in the middle. So what I do this side, I will repeat on this side. So I might use less threads. So I'm going to use six. So what you do is taking your wool and your warp, you've got two warp threads here, laying it over the top of the warp. With my left hand, I'm going to twist under and through those warp threads. With my right hand, do the same, twist over and under so they meet in the middle. I'll do this quite a few times, so I'll, you know, don't worry if you missed it the first time. And then you hold them two together and you gently pull down. And that will sit nicely on top there. So I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I'm not gonna spend too long counting my, warp, uh, my wool because we haven't really got all the time. So again, two warp threads with my wool, but this time I'll do it right under the warp, through the middle, and the same on my left, twisting it over the top, through to the middle to meet the others, and then pull down. So yeah, so we'll do a couple more using this wool. Um, this is quite an itchy wool. So now what I'll do is I'll move on to the next two warp threads. One through the middle, out the back, over the middle there and pull down. Now, when you're pulling down, don't pull down too tightly because if you start yanking it down, you're gonna start distorting your warp and you wanna keep it, you know, everything I do, you want to, there doesn't wanna be a great deal of tension involved. You just want it to be quite relaxed. Um, that's really important. Just keep your wool and your workings relaxed and yeah, also keep your shoulders relaxed because uh, that's, that's important. Um, Someone has asked me what I'm making. <laughs> that's yeah, that's a good point. I am um well, it's the start of a wall hanging, which is very similar to something like this, which is kind of can't really show you on the, but you get the get the gist. It's like a woven wall hanging. Um, so right on this side, I'm gonna do two here, under there, and over here. And pull down. So now I'm going to show you um, creating some warp, uh, some tassels over four warps. And this time I'm going to use my cotton, which is a lot thicker. So I'm just going to take a piece roughly the same length, and I'm going to cut two because I'm going to do I'm going to do two tassels. Now, when you're making tassels, don't worry too much about if they, you know if they're all zigzagging across the bottom and they're not actually in a straight line um just wait until you've finished your complete piece and then when you take it off the loom that's when you trim it because you'll notice that when you take it off your piece could be a little bit wonky or you know you don't want to start trimming too short and then realize you've trimmed it wonky and then hang it on the wall and all that kind of business so just kind of don't start trimming yet um wait until you've completely finished so because I'm using something really chunky, I'm gonna use four warp threads. <clears throat> and this time, laying my cotton over the top of all of them, twist the left one under the two warp threads on the left, and the same on the right under the two. So you've got two warp threads there, two warp threads there, and gently pull down. And you'll notice that my warps are starting to, you know, split apart a little bit and that's when you know the whole doing your basic weave afterwards comes into play and will then bring your warp threads back to the original original place um so then here we've got i'm going to do exactly the same on this side uh going to wrap lay over the top of the four warp threads there twist that one under there with the two and then twist this one under the two. And then I often find uh, I learn better from watching. So I, I, I do just, I'll just keep repeating it until 
we finished our row of tassels. I'm going to do two more yellow. Mind your fingers and your warp threads. And two again. And two again. Pull down. And then on the side, two on the right, two on the left, pull down. So yeah. Um, and then we're going to fill this section here. Uh, maybe we'll add some, maybe some pink rope. Doesn't really go that well, but it'll be fine. This is also really nice stuff if you um, <clears throat> you can use a steamer. You know, you can comb it out with a fine comb. You could comb all these out and then use a steamer to drop any kinks in your rope. That's a really nice. Um, way of creating these fluffy tassels so you can notice here that all of mine are completely different lengths i actually don't really trim my tassels very often i like to leave them quite organic um and again holding it down pull through and you can just kind of you know use your fingers to tease these out making sure that they're um even so what we've we got here we've and now this is where the, this is um a really good way of working out how many warp threads you've got left in the middle if you do one on each side as you go in like working your way towards the middle i've got two four six so i've got six tassels left so i'm not gonna then use my four warps if that makes any sense so i'll probably just finish off with some white in the middle here using um using two warp threads this time. Um, you can also use things, oops. So if you have made a mistake, which you'll see here, like I haven't caught one of my uh, pieces of wool, you could just gently pull your tassel back out and do it again um, if you make any mistakes. And then pull down. So I'll just fill in this last little section here. Um, another really, you can, you know, you can weave with anything really. You can weave with um, material and uh, raffia, um, any any kind of things really. Um, you could rip up some plastic bags of some kind. I don't know, kind of up to you what you use. So I'm just going to get to the end here. Um, am I going to have enough wool ready cut? I'm not sure. I might have to cut a bit left. Normally I'd spend a bit more time, you know, counting out my tassel threads and uh, making sure that they're all very similar thickness, but um, that would be quite a boring watch for you, I think. Um, one second, just maybe cut one more. So that is our first row of tassels. Now you could carry this on. Uh, you know, you could do a whole heap of tassels and you would end up with this really lovely textural voluminous mess, <laughs> not mess, uh, piece. Um, but again, just don't forget to do your four rows of basic weave in the middle here. Um, so I'm just going to completely go against my tips because um, I've seen, you know, we have a time limit. So I'm just going to then show you now how you make um, some loops. Um, let's have a look. Actually, no, let's let's uh, let's do the roving here. So um, one of the things I really love is this. This is what wool is before you've um, before it's spin spun into like a like a ball of wool, for example. Um, so this is like a raw, raw material. Um, it's called roving here and or wool tops, um, but it's just quite a flexible, lovely material to work with. So I'm going to show you how to create a uh, sumac, which is like a really lovely plait. And again, 
Um, I would normally create my basic weave, but as this is just a sample, um, it doesn't matter too much. So I'm gonna weave my end in, just a few this time, and poke it out the back. I wouldn't use a shuttle or a needle or anything with this stuff because it's really thick. Um, I just use my fingers. And what you can do is you can also tease it apart as well. So you, you don't have to use something this chunky. You could use half of it, for example. Um, and again, I'm going to use two warp threads at the same time. Um, and this is what we're going to do. So you're going to keep your roving above your tassels. I'm just going to move that down a little bit. So keep your roving at the top here and create, I would say, a letter C on the left. And you're going to take this bundle, you're going to go over the top of the two warp threads and you're going to tease it back through the loop, back through this C. So you probably can't really see too well. You've got it coming out over here, over the top of your warps, back under through the warp, under the warp, through your loop, and pull down. Don't worry, I'll show you a few more times. Next two warp, loop on the left, over the top, back under the warps, through there, and down. And again, da -da -da -da, back down through there. So you'll notice um, that this is creating one half of our plait here. I'm using two warp threads at a time. You can use something thinner and you could use one warp thread at a time, but I don't know if you've, I, I like stuff. I like chunky stuff, chunky materials. So I'm creating the loop on the left. With my other hand, it goes over the top of the warp, twisting it back through, oops, twisting it back through here and down and again. So don't worry too much about this bit at the bottom here. You can kind of cover the bit where you uh, wave it in with your fingers. And what's really nice with this as well is that you can, you know, if you if you created a really lovely shape, for example, if you created like a semicircle here, you could then do this technique going over the top. And it just creates a really lovely feature in your work. Right, so now we've done it to about halfway nearly. I'm gonna reverse it and we're gonna go back the opposite way. So this time we're gonna do, say a D, capital D. I'm gonna go over the top of the warp, back through and using your fingers, pull down. Again, over the top, back down. I'm probably going to run out of roving because I was a bit adventurous and I went too far along. Um, so just to be a bit slower over the top of the warp with your loop on the right here, back through and pull down. So you can see this really nice uh, plait we've got going on here. So I'll just tuck that in a bit. Um, yeah, and Again, as this is a sample, um, I would normally finish this off by adding some more roving, but um, I'm going to just move on to the next technique. So I'm just going to create as much as I can with the roving I've got. You know, and if I didn't finish it, I could always weave in a little bit here and then weave all the way across. That's, that's really nice, like just adding a bit of a feature to, to your work. Um, right, so um, that's how you create sumac, that's how you create tassels, and we've done a bit of basic weave, which is which is hidden under there. Um, and if you turn your loom over, you'll see all the workings under here. Um, so you see these are all the tassels I did before we started. And this is the top, the weave, uh, oh, the tassels here with the little bit of basic weave in the middle. Um, there's actually a hashtag on Instagram which is called the dark side of the loom, um, which is just quite nice because you can just then see everyone's kind of workings and how they do stuff, which is also really lovely. Uh, so now, just on to the last technique I'm going to show you, which is loops. I'm going to create them here. Um, 
So what you want to do is you want to get some material or no, let's not use that. I'll use I'll use this ball of wool here. So this is a rug wool I've got. Um, so I'm just going to move my work to one side just for a second while I get this ready. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use probably about two arms length, uh, maybe an arm and a half, well, just an arm and a half roughly. And I'm going to just uh, double it up for now. So I've just looped it over at the end and I'm just creating two two strands the same length yeah so then snip at the end move that to one side and then bring your work back yeah and then we're gonna just do some loops in this corner here so <clears throat> keeping your work above like your not your work sorry your wool above it and then we're going to weave in our end with our fingers again just this is an example of always keeping your materials woven in just so you don't have to do this at the end and again i would be doing it over the top of some basic weave um just i just want to keep highlighting that because it was such a disaster when my whole uh we fell apart it was very sad so just waving my end in um i've got a big chunk of wool just here and then this is so similar to creating these tassels um but it's just a bit of a, a bit of a trick on how to create loops and also you can create these loops and then trim them at the end and then they can be your tassels as well so you'll see what i mean in a second so you're going to have a loop on the right here and you're going to use two warp threads at the same time. So you're going to look over the top, you're going to hook that loop back through, hold it with your finger, create another loop and then pull down. So I'll do it again. Also, just to bear in mind that these are really easy to undo. Like that's completely undone so when you've done like a whole row of them just be careful you don't accidentally get them caught on your trousers or something and then undo the whole thing so we'll do it again <clears throat> over the top of the two warp threads create a loop on the right hand side create a loop on the left hand side using your fingers and pull down now then you move on to the next one <clears throat> next two warp threads one under there, one under there, pull down. Now it's a bit of a trick to get them all the same length, so don't worry, that takes practice. You can create them, you know, you could create really long loops, like, I mean, even longer than that, but you, you know, you get the idea that those are quite short and these are really long. Or you could create really little tiny ones, which is actually really tricky, but you know, you or you could just do a complete mixture. Um, and then just do one more. And then again, this is so important that you then weave over the top because you really don't wanna, if you pull this, this whole thing will come undone. So just bear that in mind. Um, yeah, so then here we go. Just weave over the top, use your fingers to push down and then just weave that. You could always carry, you know, you could carry on doing another, if you had lots more, you could carry on. And I think what I'll do is I'll just show you how to create those loops in a different material but this time cutting them as a tassel so then you can see what happens this is a like a felted felted wool um it's not a twist it's not a spun or is it spun it must be spun and then it's felted so it's very similar to the roving that we've used here um and you can see it's kind of it's not very flexible it's quite a stiff stiff yarn 
So I'm just going to cut some off. And I'll just create some loops in here. So again, weaving in your end. Um, right, hang on. Just play that out the back. I'm just going to take my sticker. Um, and then again, hopefully you can see, okay, there's quite a lot of things going on now. Um, we're going to use two warps at a time. This will be a bit trickier because there's no like flexibility in the warp in the yarn. You can be quite uh, quite hard wearing on your warp if you if you've used a strong cotton. And then you'll see the difference they can make. Like you can see the difference there. These are a little bit more squidgy and these are really stiff. So I'll just stick one more in there. And then a little more, one more here. And um, I'll just get my roving back at the top there. And now I'm just going to weave that over the top. Um, let's just paint that through. And then I'll just take my scissors. So get that like. And then what I often do with this kind of thing is like trim them. And this is really lovely. I use this technique on my Domestica course. Um, because I just think it looks really looks quite bizarre. Um all right, so there we go. So you've got like essentially a row of tassels, but we created it using the loop technique. Um so yeah, so that's all the techniques I'm going to show you today. Um, if you have any questions, then I would love to hear them. Um, just quickly, one more overhead thing that I wanted to show you before we get onto that. Um, you know, not all of the work that I create is heavily textured like this. Like I do, I did a Domestica logo for for my course and. Um, you know you can create lovely little shapes and stuff um so yeah so these are the kinds of you know you've all different kinds of work that i create um yeah and i'd love to answer any questions if you have any or um where okay here we go okay i'm just going to move this out of the way now because i don't think we need it where do you buy the big threads for the tassels okay um I don't know where you're based. If you're based in the UK, there's a couple of people called, um, right, you're going to have to, the Joy Studio, the Joy Studio, um, and Clover Creations. They both stock, but basically what it is is a 12 millimeter string cord, string cotton, 12 millimeters thick. You can get it in nine millimeters. Um, I think I have one hanging around somewhere, um, which is thinner. Uh, but yes, that's in the UK. Um, I guess you could probably, uh, if you wanted to just buy a cream version of it, you can just buy uh, twisted rope. So I often buy like a 20 millimeter um, twisted natural rope. Um, I get that off eBay. Um, and then what I do is then I just spend some time untwisting it. It's a little bit tedious, um, but I just get a really, a really, and I also really like the wave that it creates. Um, another question. Do you always have to start with a row of tassel? Everyone seems to. Um, no, you don't. No, you don't have to. Um, here you'll see... Um, I guess because a lot of my work is wall hangings. Um, so I often start with a row of tassels because I like that's that's the finish that I want. Um, I have got a couple of wall hangings where I've just started 
uh, for example, here, I just start with a row of hitch knots, um, which secures my wool or material, whatever I'm using, to the warp threads so that when I weave, uh, I can weave down onto this, this structure here, this row of knots. And then when I take it off the loom, you can sew these warp threads back through the back of your work. Um, and you can create placemats and uh, cushions. Um, I've actually, I should have brought this out earlier, but I do have a, here is like a, so this one, this cushion was created exactly the same way, but with no tassels on either end uh, and then I just used it can you see that it's quite bleached out so I just then sewed it into a cushion so that's another and then I just added a load of these are all tassels in the front here um it's quite fluffy it's actually going up my nose so yeah so that's that's created without a row of tassels at the bottom so no you don't you don't have to do that um how do you choose the textures depending on the techniques you are going to use or depending on the materials you have? How do you, um, that's a good question. Uh, I, how, well, that's quite hard actually. How do you choose the textures depending on the, yeah. So I think it's depending on the materials I use. So um, I, I don't know if you missed it at the beginning, but like I've got cupboards of just, uh, I like to group up my walls into and materials into uh, bags that are like so I've got a cream bag and a yellow bag and a pink bag and I have more than one bag of each color but uh, what I do is then pick out kind of my favorites of what I'm feeling that day and then as I go along um, sometimes I often sketch it out um, uh, if you've done my course, you'll know I, I talk about doing mood boards and, and things like that. But I kind of have my own favourite uh, techniques that I use. So um, I'm probably just waffling on now. But what I'm saying is it's, it's mainly based on the materials that I have in front of me, I think, mostly. I hope that, hope that makes sense. Um which is the best material for the base. Uh, do you mean the warp threads? Um, so I use a cotton warp, which looks a bit like this. Um, it's a medium thickness. It's like two millimeters thick. Uh, I use medium thickness because um, I use quite chunky walls. Uh, if you're using a thinner, you know, if you're using really thin wool and then um, wanting to create really intricate detail into your weaves then I would use thinner warp maybe like a uh, 1.1 millimeter I'd say one millimeter thickness um but it's just I just use a cotton basically it's a cotton string but quite a thin one so um because also it's extremely tough and um, it's quite hard wearing it doesn't fray um if I was to use say like this kind of thing like a rug wool it would snap um and that's that's a bit of a disaster i'm afraid uh, yeah have you woven into clothes um i haven't woven into clothes i've woven patches uh that i've sewn like i've woven a uh, like a piece of fabric so to speak and then sewn it to the back of a denim jacket um that's 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 a really nice technique um sorry you might hear my daughter she's off to bed um yeah so i, I yeah it's more i would weave a patch and then i would sew that onto my clothes yeah have we got any more questions could i make my own loom yes we can where's mine here so here is a homemade loom um this is just using a picture frame or like a wood any old wooden frame if you have one lying around and then what I've done is I've just hammered in some nails at the bottom here 
And then what you do is you just make sure your dimensions and measurements are exactly the same on either side, either end here. Um, yeah, and that's it. You just warp it up like you would uh, a, a shop bought loom. But yes, you can definitely make your own loom here. I'll just show you a little bit, a little bit closer. And this way you can always, um, you can also make uh, the distance of your warp threads. You can make them smaller or larger. Okay, good. Yeah, can I make my own loom? I answered that one. Uh, Any more? Which was your favorite project and why? Uh, definitely my wedding weave. I think uh, it hangs in our bedroom. Um, it's something that I, I hope that I can keep forever, keep away from moths. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I would say that's that's definitely my favourite and I hope to pass that down as, as we get older. Um, yeah, I can answer one more and then I'm going to say more goodbyes. Uh, do you like to make in a circular form? Um, honestly, no. <laughs> the, um, I have got a round loom and I did a commission. I, I also do commissions for interior designers and I did one a few years ago uh, and they wanted it created on a, on a circular loom. It was about like it was huge it was on a bespoke circular copper frame um and it it just was a disaster from start to finish like uh i i didn't enjoy it and then it it got rejected and then um yeah i just never i've just never woven on a circular loom again <laughs> but it's doable and i have seen some really lovely pieces so don't let that um don't let that stop you. Cool. Um, well, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you got some good tips and techniques. Uh, and yeah, just uh, I'm on Instagram as well. Uh, my Instagram is peas and needles. So if you want to find me there um, and say hi, or ask any more questions or do my domestica course, that'd be lovely. Cool. All right. Thanks very much. Bye. Esto es lo que yo les voy a enseñar hoy día. I'll be showing you guys how to finish this mask.